going on, guys? JD from New York here, and tonight, tonight we're drinking beer, man. Tonight we're drinking beer. So good, man. Coffee stout. Kentucky coffee stout, bro. Absolutely fucking amazing. It's Haitian coffee that is aged in oak bourbon barrels, man. You can't get any better than that, bro. You can't get any better than that, bro. Okay? Now, what we're going to be talking about today in an effort to get you guys ready for the Royal Rumble on Sunday. I'm at work. I can't wait to get out. It's fucking cold. We're expecting 14 inches of fucking snow over here. Jesus Christ, I don't know what to do with myself, man. But, in an effort to get you guys excited for the Royal Rumble, I decided I'm going to talk about my top three favorite Royal Rumble moments of all time. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite Royal Rumble moment is as I go through my top three, which is in no particular order at all, okay? Obviously, we have to start off with the greatest Royal Rumble of all time, which is the 1992 Royal Rumble in which Ric Flair was crowned the undisputed WWF World Heavyweight Champion. Not only was that one of the best moments of all time, the match itself will go down forever as the greatest booked and produced Royal Rumble match in the event's history. No question. Okay. Now, this is the first year in which the WWF title, back in the day, was going to be up for grabs. Okay. Never in the, in the event's history was the world championship going to be determined inside the Royal Rumble. This one was vacated. The title was actually vacated because Hogan went against The Undertaker at the 1991 Survivor Series, in which The Undertaker won his first WWF title. He beat Hulk Hogan with the help of Ric Flair. He beat Hulk Hogan with the help of Paul Bearer, and it was one of the greatest moments of all time. And then not even a week later, Hulk Hogan got his rematch because of the controversial ending at the Survivor Series and won the title back at Tuesday night in Texas. Now, that event also had a controversial ending. So, Jack Tunney, being the president of the WWF at the time, stripped Hogan of the title and declared that the title was going to be up for grabs inside the Royal Rumble. Okay? Now, the Royal Rumble in which Ric Flair won determined a lot of things, man. It determined a lot of things. Now, Ric Flair came in at number three, and the way Ric Flair won this, and I got a little fun fact after I talk about how Ric Flair won this Royal Rumble. Ric Flair came in at number three, okay? Sid Justice, Randy Savage, and Hulk Hogan were the final four in the Royal Rumble. Hulk Hogan and Savage were both eliminated by Sid Justice. It was Sid Justice and Ric Flair. Hogan shocked and surprised that Sid Justice eliminated him. He thought Sid was his friend. This actually started the heel turn for Sid Justice going on into WrestleMania 8. So Hogan, surprised by this, is furious on the outside. He's like, I thought we were brothers. What's going on here? Yada, yada, yada. You know how Hogan was back in the 90s. So he pulls Sid Justice over the top rope, grabs his arm, and Sid Justice is trying to fight back. He's in the ring with Ric Flair. Ric Flair sees this and takes advantage like Ric Flair would and dumps him over the top rope, earning himself the Royal Rumble and the WWF Championship, okay? Now, in the book, To Be the Man, Ric Flair mentions not knowing that he was going to be winning the Royal Rumble, until actually arriving at the Knickerbocker Arena the day of the event. And he also felt that he was brought in at number three to showcase his skills and endurance in the WWF. Meanwhile, Bobby the Brain Heenan mentioned in his autobiography, Bobby the Brain, that it was his initial suggestion that Ric Flair enter at number one and not number three for dramatic purposes. That's when Vince McMahon changed it to number three and claimed that it was his idea. Now, the aftermath of this is what boggles my mind because 
This all led into WrestleMania 8. And if the way the Royal Rumble happened, we would actually get a Ric Flair versus Hulk Hogan match. That's the way and the direction everybody thought it was going to go. We thought we were going to get Savage versus Jake, the Snake Roberts at WrestleMania 8. You know, WrestleMania 8 was vastly changed following the Royal Rumble. The aftermath of this Royal Rumble had a confrontation between Hogan and Justice, which played out at the Royal Rumble and went out over a series of WWE television programs, superstars to be exact. This was on January 25th, 1992. WWF President Jack Tunney held a press conference where he announced that Hogan would face Flair for the WWF World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania 8. Everybody thought we were going to get Hogan versus Flair. Justice, who was in attendance at this press conference, also began standing up as Tony was making this announcement, and he was outraged and termed the announcement the most bogus act Jack Tunney has ever pulled off. Sid later apologized, and Hogan accepted. But on the February 8th edition of Saturday Night's Main Event, Justice abandoned Hogan during a tag team match against Flair and The Undertaker, completing his heel turn and leading to a match at WrestleMania 8. Flair... In the meanwhile, began feuding with Savage over the WWF World Heavyweight Championship. And according to Storyline on WWF television, Flair claimed that he had a previous relationship with Miss Elizabeth, Savage's wife, going as far as presenting pictures of Elizabeth in which Flair had himself superimposed. This culminated in a title match at WrestleMania 8. Savage won the match and his second WWF World Heavyweight Championship. Now... Now, I had to look it up just to make sure I'm giving you guys the proper information. If WrestleMania 8 was going to go the way it was intended to go, it could have been the greatest WrestleMania or one of the greatest WrestleManias of all time. Look at this card that we could have had at WrestleMania 8 if we got the main event that we should have had with Hogan versus Flair. Hogan versus Flair for the WWF title. Savage versus Jake the Snake Roberts, The Ultimate Warrior versus The Undertaker, Bret Hart versus Roddy Piper, Legion of Doom versus Money Inc., Shawn Michaels versus Marty Jannetty, and the reason why that match didn't happen was, was because Marty Jannetty got fired. Marty Jannetty got fired for, I believe, what was drug abuse, okay? So we could have had Shawn Michaels versus Marty Jannetty, The British Bulldog versus The Berserker, Team Boss Man versus Team Nasty Boys and Tatanka versus Rick Martel. I mean, look at that undercard. Or look at that up that those main event matches. You know, the, the, the undercard seems okay as well with Janetti and Michaels, Bulldog versus Berserker, Tatanka versus Martel, Legion of Doom versus Money Inc. But look at that. Brett versus Roddy, which was great anyway. We still got that. Ultimate Warrior versus The Undertaker, Randy Savage versus Jake the Snake, and Hogan versus Ric Flair. I mean, that WrestleMania 8 card could have been absolutely monumental. That's completely changed from what we got actually at WrestleMania 8. Now, the reason why Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan did not happen was, I believe I read somewhere that it was about the steroid scandal that was going on. I also heard and I read that Hogan versus Flair was not drawing at house shows and they did not have a main event match on pay-per-view yet and they tried to test it out during the house shows and they just did not draw and as always you know with Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair back in the 90s their egos were out of control so they could not determine a winner and Hogan didn't want to drop to Flair Flair didn't want to drop to Hogan so it went back and forth and they couldn't decide on an outcome so they vastly changed the card it was changed to Hogan versus Sid and then uh, Savage versus Flair for the WWF Championship, and then we got Undertaker versus Jake, and we got uh, El Matador, El, El Matador, Tino Santana versus Shawn Michaels, and you guys know the rest of the cards. So WrestleMania 8 could have been fucking fantastic. I mean, it was still great the way it was, but it could have been absolutely monumental. And that all stemmed from Hogan being stripped of the title after Tuesday night in Texas, Ric Flair winning the title at the Royal Rumble, and then bleeding into WrestleMania 8. So that's the whole history of what happened dating back to the 1991 Survivor Series and culminating with Ric Flair winning the WWF Championship at the 1992 Royal Rumble, which will always go down as one of my favorite moments, 
if not my favorite Royal Rumble of all time. All right, this is one that I want you guys, if you've never seen it before, because I know some of you, you know, you just started watching wrestling. I get a lot of comments from everybody saying that, J.D., I, I've been out of the loop for wrestling and watching you. You bring me back and your passion and, you know, your dedication to the WWE product. It's actually gotten me back into watching wrestling again. If you guys have not seen this, I want you to go out on the network and I want you to watch this. Because this is one of the greatest endings to a Royal Rumble you will ever see. And the aftermath is absolutely phenomenal. Because it led to one of the greatest, not only WrestleMania matches of all time, but one of the greatest matches that WWE will ever see, period. With Stone Cold and Bret the Hitman Hart. I'm talking about the 1997 Royal Rumble. Now, we all know that Bret Hart and Stone Cold Steve Austin had their classic match at the Survivor Series in 1996 inside Madison Square Garden. Bret Hart was out for most of 1996. He comes back. He's refreshed. He gets the opportunity to pick his one opponent, and Stone Cold has been pushing Bret Hart to come back, you know, calling him the shit man. If you replaced a lot of H and Hitman with a lot of S, you got my true opinion of what I think of Bret the Hitman Hart. Fucking great promos, man. Steve Austin was absolutely on top of his game in 1996. Great. Great. So, Bret Hart comes back. He actually chose Stone Cold Steve Austin upon coming back to be his first opponent because he thought they would put on fucking a clinic. Five-star classics. And that's exactly what they did, man. One of the greatest rivalries of all time. So, Bret Hart won that match inside Madison Square Garden in 1996 Survivor Series. And we go on into the 1997 Royal Rumble. Now, the ending to this, I always watch back each and every year. Because it's a side of Bret Hart that we never seen before. Someone who is so obsessed with just being better than his opponent. Someone who's so obsessed with being the WWF champion. And at that point, he felt like Stone Cold Steve Austin was walking into the WWE and slowly taking his spot. And this transpired so well on television. Now, when you got the caliber of superstar like Stone Cold and Bret Hart, things that, you know, we usually watch for our enjoyment seem to be fucking real. Like, what the fuck is going on? I mean, is this really happening right now? At the conclusion of this match, I doubt anybody knew if you're watching it Minus the dirt sheets, minus the websites, minus the newsletters. You're watching this and you're seeing Bret Hart flip out at the end of this Royal Rumble. And I guarantee you, you're thinking that this is fucking real. Because the way this transpired, I mean, it just had real life emotion in it. And that's what makes it so fucking great. Stone Cold Steve Austin, Vader, The Undertaker, Diesel played by Glenn Jacobs, who was the fake Diesel because Kevin Nash went over to WCW with, uh, with uh, Scott Hall, a.k.a. Razor Ramon, and Bret Hart. Those guys were in the Royal Rumble. The last five guys. Okay, now how this transpired is Bret Hart eliminates Diesel. Okay, now Stone Cold, before I, before I even get to Bret Hart eliminating Diesel, he was eliminated. Bret Hart, Bret Hart himself eliminates Stone Cold Steve Austin. His feet hit the ground. He's eliminated per Royal Rumble rules. He is gone. So then you're left with Vader, Undertaker, Diesel, and Bret Hart. Okay? Now, Stone Cold is eliminated. But at the same time he's eliminated, on the opposite side of the ring from where Stone Cold was eliminated, Terry Funk and Mankind were just brawling on the outside. It took every official that was outside monitoring this Royal Rumble to break them up. Stone Cold picked the perfect opportunity to sneak back in the ring. At this point, Brett eliminates Diesel. Undertaker and Vader are brawling inside the ring, trying to eliminate one another. Steve Austin eliminates both men at the same time. Bret Hart looks around. He thinks he won. And before he even blinks, Stone Cold is eliminating Bret Hart and is crowned the 1997 winner of the Royal Rumble. Referees turn around to see Stone Cold standing in the ring alone. They didn't know what the fuck happened. 
They declared him the winner because they seen him in the ring all by himself. Now, at this point, Bret Hart was fucking confused. He didn't know what was going on. He's lobbying to the crowd. He's lobbying to the officials. What's going on? He's fucking tugging and shoving referees. He's getting physical with referees. He goes over to Vince McMahon. He, sh he pulls on Vince McMahon's tuxedo, and he starts screaming. He's throwing a fucking temper tantrum. Jim Ross is saying, I seen it. I seen it. Jerry the King Laurel is like fucking, well, don't hit me, bro. You know, Bret Hart was going into a tirade. Stone Cold, he knew he robbed the victory. He escaped right to the back, hands raised as he's going up the ramp. It was an absolute fucking chaotic scene. And just by that alone, it's amazing how everything transpired. The real life emotion that was put into it, you know, the caliber of superstar that, you know, that was there with Stone Cold and Bret the Hitman Hart. And then all this, everything that you see there was pretty much a starting point for what we've seen at WrestleMania 13 with Bret Hart and Stone Cold Steve Austin in the submission match, which Ken Shamrock was the special guest referee. It was fucking unbelievable, and that was one of the greatest matches in WWF history. Now, inside that Royal Rumble, Austin actually tied Hogan with the most eliminations in a single Royal Rumble match alongside Kane, uh, which was 10 until Roman Reigns broke the record and topped all of them with 12 in 2014. Now, Shawn Michaels that night beat Psycho Sid for the WWF Championship, okay? Michaels later vacated the WWF Championship on a special edition of Thursday Raw Thursday, and he gave that infamous I Lost My Smile promo, citing that he had knee problems and that he was going to vacate the title. And due to this situation, uh, and especially over the Royal Rumble ending, Steve Austin, Bret Hart, The Undertaker, and Vader were in a fatal four-way at In Your House number 13 in a Four Corners match for the WWF Championship. Bret Hart won that match. He was crowned the WWF Championship. He got what he wanted. And then the next night on Raw, Bret Hart lost the title back to Sid because of Stone Cold Steve Austin. And then Bret Hart, on the March 17th edition of Monday Night Raw, Hart and Sid phased off in a steel cage match for the WWF title. Sid won that one because of outside interference by both Stone Cold and The Undertaker, which eventually set up WrestleMania 13. Undertaker beat Sid for the WWF title, while Bret Hart and Steve Austin went one-on-one -on -one in one of the greatest matches of all time. But the ending of that Royal Rumble, one of the best ever that you will ever see. But the next one in my top three, which is going to be the final one, because choosing a top five is just way too fucking difficult. But these are my favorite top three. I knew for I knew the instant I wanted to do this video what I was going to put in my top three. You got Flair. You got this one with Stone Cold Steve Austin screwing Bret Hart at the 1997 Royal Rumble. And then you got the next one which I'm going to talk about which involves Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. All right, the last moment I'm going to talk about really needs no description whatsoever. I don't need to go over it. I'm going to simply tell you guys to go and watch it because whatever I say is not going to do it justice. But this is what started The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels' feud, which eventually led to Shawn Michaels retiring from professional wrestling. The 2007 Royal Rumble. The ending that will leave you fucking breathless, man. Watching this live, which I did with my brother, Seeing this and seeing who the last two guys were, I mean, it was absolutely fucking phenomenal when it actually happened. Randy Orton, Edge, The Undertaker, and Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels was on the outside, rated RKO, were going to work. They actually reconciled. They were actually feuding for a little bit in the match. I think Edge tried to sneak attack Randy Orton in the match, and then they said, you know what, we should use our collective bargaining and try and get out The Undertaker and then worry about winning the Royal Rumble on our own. They didn't know Shawn Michaels was on the outside, or I guess they forgot he was on the outside, but, you know, Edge being the ultimate opportunist tried to sneak attack Randy Orton in this match, being that it's uh, down to the final four, but they eventually reconciled and they went against The Undertaker. Shawn Michaels came in the ring and eventually eliminated both Orton and Edge, and it was left to The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels. I, I really can't even describe what this was, at the time it happened, I really can't even... I can watch it over and over again. I can't describe to you how amazing this was. You just got to go back and watch it. 
The fact that The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels are closing a fucking Royal Rumble is monumental and epic. Just to begin with, just with the names that are there. Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker, okay? Undertaker eventually ends up winning. He goes on to challenge Batista in what was a great fucking match at WrestleMania. And he eventually wins the WWF Championship, or WWE Championship. So, Shawn Michaels and the camera pans on Shawn Michaels. You see his facial expression. You see how disgusted he is. You see The Undertaker showing, you know, small signs of respect for, the, for you know, for Shawn Michaels. It's all there. You guys got to go back and watch it. But this is what started a three-year feud between Shawn Michaels, four-year feud, I should say, four-year feud between Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. 2007, they were in the Royal Rumble to close it out. Undertaker wins. The next year, 2008 Royal Rumble, they come out, and they're numbers one and two. They are numbers one and two, man. It was ab absolutely fucking unbelievable. And the Royal Rumble 2007, in which Undertaker won, he's the only man, as far as I know, to win it from the number 30 position. So that's the easiest position to win it. And it goes down in the record books as The Undertaker being the first man to win it from the number 30 spot. So in 2008, they're both number 1 and 2. They start the Royal Rumble after the previous year. They ended it. And then in 2009, they go on to WrestleMania and have the greatest fucking match in company history. I don't give a shit what anybody says. You will not find the match better than WrestleMania 25 with Undertaker and Shawn Michaels. Again, I can't describe to you how great that match was because I will do it no justice it is absolutely fucking out of this world unbelievable and then Wrestlemania 26 Shawn Michaels wants one last chance to break the streak he put his fucking career on the line if he couldn't do it and we all know how that ended absolutely unbelievable the ending of the 2007 Royal Rumble was four years of build towards The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels which eventually culminated and concluded at WrestleMania 25 and then 26 one last time. And it also ended the career of Shawn Michaels. Man, absolutely fucking unbelievable. Go out and watch it. Please, do yourselves a favor. Grab a six-pack. If you're on the East Coast, if you're going to get snowed in, make sure you have a cold beverage. Watch it. It's not a bad rumble, but when it gets down to the last 10, 15 minutes, you guys will thank me. 1992 Rumble and the 1997 Rumble with Stone Cold Steve Austin and Ric Flair, respectively, man. That is my top three. Let me know what you guys think about everything in the top three. Let me know what your favorite Royal Rumble moments are in the history of the Royal Rumble. Getting you guys ready for Sunday and the Royal Rumble, man. I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be unpredictable. Will it be Bray Wyatt? Will it be Roman Reigns? Will it be Brock Lesnar? Will it be Triple H returning to get the job done himself let me know what you guys think down below hit that thumbs up and i'll be back with more royal rumble coverage as well as off the script all weekend long this is jd thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys later